All right, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for the blessings that you pour down upon our lives. Father, we are just going to position ourselves and position our hearts tonight to hear whatever it is you have to say. And Father God, I just humble myself as your servant, as we all do here, not only to hear but and to abide, but Holy Spirit, you just take over here tonight. There's miracles awaiting to happen, but Father God, we just want to be in an expecting mood this evening, Father God. We don't want to put up any more walls. We don't want to put up any fear, any doubt. So Father God, Holy Spirit, you take over this evening. Father God, use me as you will. And Lord God, let your miracles flow here this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So did you all, everyone get a brochure? Okay, there's not too much changes in here. Um, if... if uh, Actually, there's no changes in here. One thing we did need to, to announce for our kids club, we are going to be having uh, baptismals for um, kids club and in, in the children up there. We are obviously trying to orchestrate that with bad weather. You know, obviously we're, we're just trying to get that together. So hopefully within the next two to three weeks, we're going to have that done. Same as before. Obviously, we're going to have a two to three minute video go through it with them. We've, we've been touching touching uh, the children and giving them a little bit of edification on um, what bas baptism is all about. So um, just like an adult, obviously they're going to have to go through just a little course and, and really know the meaning of it. Um, also on, um, w for volunteers um, in the children's ministry, kids ministry, nursery, um, volunteers for pretty much any area really. Uh, we're going to be meeting for all the, the fresh, vo fresh volunteers, current volunteers, those who want to volunteer. It's going to be, so put this in your phones, on March 2nd. Most of you probably already have heads up on that. Um, it, we're going to be training, so please RSVP by next Saturday if you could, because obviously we have to have, uh, we're going to have meals and making sure we have enough, enough food for that. So it's going to be on March 2nd. Um, it's, that's on a Saturday. It's going to be at 11 a.m. Okay, so RSVA, VP Gina, if you would. Her number is on here, actually under prayer, contact Gina. Or you can visit with her after service as well if you guys want to participate. You know, everybody's got a calling, whether it's cleaning toilets, whether it's shoveling sidewalks. Uh, there's obviously something that needs to keep the motor running in every type of establishment or building, especially in God's house where he wants his saints to be planting seeds and doing his work. So if you feel, even though you're not, you don't feel like you're qualified, I'm not qualified to stand up here, but the Holy Spirit is, and Jesus is because he's inside of me here. So obviously we have to be as just available, and we have to be willing, and we have to be uh, servants to that. So come if you even feel like you, you have the urge or the unction to come to just volunteer more, because man, I'll tell you what, we're running low on help, and the helpers that are here are running dry. And I'd rather have them be pulled out and get into service a lot more uh, so we can do a rotation system. So anywhere, you know, hey, if you, don't, if you don't like kids, I'll tell you what, you told me 15 years ago that I was going to be ministering to kids, putting a puppet on my hand and starting to, starting to talk in different voices to these kids and ministering to these children. I would have said, you know, turn around and get out of here. I would have kicked them in the you know what and say, forget you. You know, I can't, kids, are you kidding me? I didn't even have the thought of even having children. I didn't want to deal with children. Um, you know, and, and God positions you when you are ready to position yourself. Amen? So don't worry about what you think you're called to do. Your calling will come when you step in. Amen? Hallelujah. But candy, there's one on So anytime you go to Walmart, just grab another bag. Just bring it in. We've got tubs. Collective. We we'll just collect them. So please bring them in for that. Instead of anybody, I guess, huh? Put together anyway. Go ahead and put the pledge up, and we'll say our.
I want to yell over you guys. Hello? Test, test. You want me to do the handheld? On? How come every time the mic? <laughs> right? Right? Set free pledge is in here too. If this oh here we are. Join me. I am part of the fellowship. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's go ahead and get ready to receive our tithes and offerings today. Ushers, if everybody has, has the bucket. Praise team, come on up and we'll praise the Lord. I posted something on Facebook today, and I do that, I do that periodically if the Holy Spirit leads me to, to just quickly. And, you know, some people are following me and liking, and those who don't, I'm sure they, you know, discard whatever I have to say. But something came up in my spirit as far as um, us worshiping and praising God in the storms of life. And when we, when we get to a point of having to just praise God when the storm is over, then really the only reward you're going to get and receive is the fact that the storm is over. That's your praise. But when we learn to praise Him in the storms of life, when you're going through whatever you're going through right now, when you pick yourself up and praise Him in the, in the moment of all of the circumstances and situations and storms right now, not only are you going to get the praise and blessing of the storm finally coming to an end, but there's going to be another blessing on the end of that, more powerful that's going to surpass your knowledge of understanding because God has been praised through the storm and at the end, there's going to be another blessing as well. Not just the storm getting over. Amen? Amen. So let's get our hearts ready to praise the Lord. Amen. Stand with us tonight. Amen? All right. One, two, three, four. All the people said amen. Join in real loud tonight. Small group, but loud. Amen. First one. You are not alone. If you are lonely, when you feel afraid, you're not the only. We are the same. In me, your mercy to be forgiven. Thank God it's all we need And all the people said amen Oh, and all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord for His love never ends 
Sing it again, all the people. And all the people said amen. Oh, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. Preach. Blessed all the poor in spirit. Torn apart. Blessed all the persecuted. I believe Matthew, blessed are the poor in spirit. Help me out. Matthew 6, Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Amen. All the blesseds. Happy are they. Amen. Happy are they. Jesus would give that Sermon on the Mount. So that's a great song. Amen. So. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We love you, Lord. You give and take away. Join us. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. When streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. 
every blessing you pour out on us, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. So we just thank you. Thank you in advance. Hallelujah. And praise you through it all. Amen.
from the Lord. Come on, people. He is our help. He is. I lift my eyes up. My help comes from the Lord. Only you do what you can do, God. thank you that you never fail us. You never let us go. Lord, you are always there. You never fail. You never give up on us, Father. We thank you that you are an awesome and mighty God. Lord, you have great and mighty things planned for our lives, Father God. If we follow in your footsteps, Father God, if we follow in hunger and thirst after you, Lord, you bless us beyond all measure, Father. Your blessings are heaped on us every day. And Lord, we half the time we just forget about them. But Lord, you woke us up this morning. You breathe life into us, Father God. Lord, everything about us, the good, the bad, Lord, you breathe through us. You heal us. You restore us. You give us life. And called us out of darkness to walk in your marvelous light, Father. Lord, let us be more like you, Father. Lord, you are faithful always. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, tonight have your way in this place, in our hearts, our minds. Lord, open our hearts to the Holy Spirit at work in us already, Father, to do your good pleasure. Lord, let us be more like you. Let us not leave the same that we came tonight. And Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Kind of, I'm just kind of drowning over here in emotions. You know, God is an orderly God. But we seem to get in the way most of the time anyway. So there are things that we could do religiously, step by step. I read something. It was quite a while ago, and I think I shared it as well. Facebook in my many hours of boredom at work.
Yeah, that wasn't supposed to be funny, but... <laughs> you know, the Spirit of God moves in mysterious ways, and I can, I can do my best to spend hours and hours and hours planning a sermon and making sure it hits the spot in certain areas, crescendos here or there. And I can even have little footnotes on the side by saying, okay, now is time to show an emotion of laughter. Be a little bit more, okay, now it's time to, 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 to cry here. But following that type of order tends to, tends to put religion in the box. Because what good would it do if I was trying to lead a congregation with my own emotions in certain areas of a sermon where the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with it? Just the facts of my own wisdom written down on a piece of paper trying to move a congregation and lift them up. So as I was sitting there praising... Closing my eyes and entering into his presence. My cry was not only for myself, but for everyone else to get into a position to where they have no fear of coming to the Lord. And I think I did this a few months ago, but I, let's, I, I, I just want to do this again, and I think the Lord has certain words as well. He wants to speak through this. But as we're sitting in our pews right now, pondering our day, pondering our week, pondering our life, for that matter, you have to close your eyes, close your eyes, but picture Jesus right next to you right now. You're the only one He is focused on. He is asking you to turn your full attention to Him right now. The thought of gazing into those perfect loving eyes, into that perfect holiness of glory and grace. What are your thoughts that are going through your head right now? What are the emotions that are going through your hearts right now as you gaze into those loving eyes there might be fear there might be conviction there might be anger there might be a million questions going through your mind right now Jesus why? Jesus why? Jesus how? how did this happen? why is this happening? Why am I feeling this way? Some of us may not even be able to gaze into those eyes because of that perfect love may be convicting enough right now because of what we have done, what we have brought in here with us tonight, that we feel ashamed to be sitting next to the Holy of Holies, so precious and pure. But I want you to lift your eyes up right now and gaze into His Spirit as He's smiling at you right now, holding your hand and telling you, I know exactly where you have been. I know exactly where you are now. And whatever conviction you feel in your heart, I am here to forgive you. I am here to cover all of the sins in the past. I am here for you and love you so much that I want you to lay it all down right now and lose your conviction and lose the fear and boldly be able to look into my eyes and receive that love and receive that forgiveness. So don't fret anymore. I am here with you. And when we enter into praise and worship, 
I don't even listen to the words anymore. Sometimes a song engages me and I start belting out and singing along, but I am in the holy of holies of places where it's just me and him. Right now, tonight, it is just us and him. So if there is any conviction on our hearts, rest assured, right now, He wants you to whisper it in his ear and ask you to forgive him. He is smiling right back at you and say, I have. I have. I've shed my blood for that. I died for that. Don't worry about that any longer. I've redeemed you for that as well. And all he's asking us to do in return repent of that conviction. Repent of what we had just asked Him to forgive us for. And turn our ways. And even now we think, I don't have the strength. I don't have the power. I don't have the might. How come I keep on falling into the same sin over and over and over and over and over again? And He's reminding you right now that you do have the strength and the power. You've got to continue focusing on me. You've got to continue abiding in me. Because if you're abiding in me, I will abide in you. And then greater am I in you than anything that is in this world. Anything that tries to come against you. So we can have a message here tonight on... Pointing out sin and conviction and doom and gloom. But this is the good news of the gospel. Amen? Amen. This is the good news. It's nice to know that, that we have a place to go where we need to find out the truth about what is, what is right and what is wrong. And I think more so... I would rather lift someone up in the position of where they're at right now, even knowing, even knowing in the back of my head someone's going through this or someone's going through that. Man, they've been doing this three years in a row now and they won't, and they won't turn around and repent. But it's not my job to sit there and continue to pound them over the head and say, and point out the sins. It's my job to say, look, the grace of God will empower you. Let me come down. Let me come alongside you and pray for you and with you and show you the strength that I have achieved in the victory of my life through the same sin that you have gone through. And let me show you how it's done. So we're all here tripping and falling. We're all here going through temptations and trials, one to another, but each one of us are in the same body. So if one limb is failing, the other limb needs to come in and raise it back up. My message is in James, so let's turn to to James chapter 1. And I want to say how great a job those words were during praise and worship. Right on cue. And I'm commending my daughter, of course. Brittany has been doing that job for the last month and a half, two months now. Thank you, Brittany. I'm a proud papa. Amen. We're going to be, uh, we're going to be allowing William to get up in there too and practice and, and, and get into that position as well. But Brittany, you did a good job. We're just going to go, oops, James chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to see what the Holy Spirit does. It's quiet in here, so maybe we can loud it up a little bit. 
Now, I've got the King James Version, which there's a bunch of these and thous and thys and yees and mays, and so I just printed out a text from the Passion Translation, and I love how, I love how this is actually... Um, the, the responses that it says, obviously it's, you know, I had to read through it a couple of times making sure it, it wasn't a miss. Um, and it was right on, because sometimes you get into certain translations where they might be a little skewed, they might be a little off, they, you know, it might be, a, you know, just not quite what the Word of God intends it to say. But this one right here, and I'm going to go ahead and just read it from just, from just right away from verse 1. Um, it says, Greetings. And now right here it says, my name is Jacob. Now, Jacob is actually his Hebrew name, and then it's translated into James. Greetings, my name is James, and I am a loved slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to all the twelve tribes of Israel who have been sown as seeds among the nation. So all of us who have been born again are all seeds of Abraham. So this is actually talking to the saints, to the fellow believers, and it'll go right on to verse 2. My fellow believers, say, I'm the believer. So it's talking to you. It's talking to us, uses, as JT would say. It's talking to uses. To my fellow believers, what it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulty. See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. Now I want you to jump down to, we'll just skip a few here, but jump over to verse 13 for a second here. Because all of us here have been tempted Verse 13 says, I don't know if it says anything different in this translation. When you are tempted, don't ever say, God is tempting me. He is incapable of being tempted by the evil, so he is never the source of that same evil that is trying to tempt you. Instead, verse 14, instead, it's each, it's each person's own desires and thoughts that drag them into this evil and lures them away into the darkness. So when we sit there and, and try, to dis, try to discern what is happening to us in this world, all of these temptations that come upon us, we can't blame God, can we? These temptations, the same thing that the devil did to Jesus, he tempts you with all of this evil, and it starts up here. Because our mind and our thoughts, our emotions get in the way, fear starts coming in. All of the troubles that we see that are surrounding us, how many people got stuck in the snow today? Many. How many people maybe didn't even make it to work today because of the snow? One, one of my employees didn't, or fellow employee. How does that drag you down into fear? Now it is our emotions, emotional reaction to these things that, that can obviously drag us into a spiral down and down and down. So what we, are, what we are looking at is the temptations that we are facing each and every day obviously are planted there because of the sin that we have grown up with. We're not allowed to blame the sins of others for our own problems. Amen? Sorry, there's a point in time when we get to grow up, right? We can't blame our mommy and daddy anymore. Sure, there are generational curses that come down upon us, but these generational curses stop the moment that you have called yourself a Christian and the Holy Spirit has cleansed you and moved you into redemption. Amen? So when we've got all of these temptations coming upon us, we can't sit there and yell and blame God. 
God, why is this happening? God, what's going on? Well, sure, he probably knows the reason why. Most often or not, he's going to tell you what the source is, where it's coming from, and what you got to do about it. Number one, what does it say here? When it seems you are facing the difficulties... What you have to do was stir up your faith. I'm on verse 4. As your endurance grows even stronger, it releases perfection in every part of your being until there's nothing, nothing missing and nothing lacking. These temptations, even though they are coming from the enemy, are going to grow our strength and grow our faith. We can allow them and allow them and allow them and blame God and God remove this, God remove that. Take this away from me, God. No, my grace is sufficient for you. You have stepped over the line. Jesus now resides in you. You have the power of Christ within you. You now have the authority to resist the devil and he will flee. Amen? Let's move on to the trials and tests. There are tests and trials that we all go through as well. Now that takes a discerning spirit within us to know the difference. Because if we're blaming God for something that he is, that he is not responsible for, but then we're trying to rebuke the devil in an area where we are also being tested by God, now we're confused. And we'll read on and it'll explain. Where did I stop at? Five, and if anyone longs to be wise, anyone, say I'm anyone. anyone. I'm not wise enough yet. Anybody wise enough yet? Are we all, all we, we're, we're all perfectly wise in here. If anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you or convict you. He sees it. Even your failures, he sees your overwhelming failures and he brings in his gener generous grace. Verse 6, just make sure you ask, empowered by confident faith, without doubting that you will receive. For the ambivalent or wavering person believes one minute and doubts the next. And there's a whole nother 15 sermons there I can get into. Because that, that, that actually just kind of goes to a lack of faith there, where if you do not believe, when you come to the Lord God and ask Him for wisdom, if, and, and, and you are there to receive it, you're going to receive it. But if you are doubting, if you are undecided, if you are unsure of what's going to happen, or what God is actually telling you, what it goes on to say, you are like, being undecided makes you become like the rough seas driven and tossed by the wind. You're up one minute, toss down the next. When you are half-hearted and wavering, it leaves you unstable. Can you really expect to receive anything from the Lord when you're in that condition? You remember the, you remember the scripture, either you're, either you're hot or you're cold, I'd rather have you hot, my brother, because, man, I want you on fire. I'd rather have you cold because you're not too haughty, prideful, in your ways, and you're a lot easier to transform when you're cold. Why do you think a new baby Christian, when they come in to know the Lord, when they're reborn right away, they just seem to be on fire? Seems like nothing is up. They're on cloud nine. And here you get these religious people that just kind of walk around looking at them. Oh, you can't. Oh, you better not jump and shout like that. Um, oh, you can't. Oh, I don't know. You're not, you're, trying, you're not that holy yet. You know what? They felt the power of God where they were at, and they have no fear. They caught it. They grasped it at that moment. Holy smokes, I'm redeemed. What I've done over these 15, 20, 30 years, it's clean. Woo! 
but then all of a sudden we become Christians again. And then we go back, and oh, I've been a Christian for 20 years now, and I know a thing or two. Right? I know better than you. I don't think you should be walking that type of, oh, you better not sit down in your pew now. That's not, oh, God's going to come. I don't think you're, I, I think you understand where I'm coming from. Religion sets in. Doubt sets in because all of a sudden we haven't experienced that fullness of glory over the 20 years. Okay, I'll say it. There are people who have claimed to be Christians for 40 years and they're dead as a doornail. You can, get a, you can get someone so on fire who's only known the Lord for one year and he's flying in the Holy Spirit, the gifts are flowing through them, they have no fear about laying hands on people and they're recovering because they do not waver. They heard what God said, they're not going to compromise what God said. They're going to move in the Holy Spirit and what they tell them to do right now. They don't have to sit there and do a, a, a huge 30-day study and contemplate and to try to discern this whole documentary of, oh my goodness, is this right? Is this wrong? Wavering. Should I do it? Should I not, God? Do I hear you? Am I hearing you? The body of Christ hasn't received an ounce of... What do you think's happening in China? What do you think's happening in Afghanistan? What do you think's happening in these third countries? People are here in the power of God, and they are so on fire, they get killed if they... They don't care. And we, we... We're scared to even bring one out into the open in the free country. We can't even bring this thing out to our work because we're someone's gonna say. She's Amen. <laughs> you wanna know about the God that, that I, I've been praising for the last twenty years? Or or wait a second, I better hide it at home. I better hide the Holy Spirit on that too. You can rebuke the Holy Spirit in your hearts. And that's blasphemy. I just got convicted there myself. Because you kind of wonder how much, how many opportunities, how many doors, how many windows of opportunities that the Holy Spirit has nudged you to say a prayer here, lay hands here. Do something with this guy. Do something with your faith. Because without works, it's dead. You can call yourself Christian all you want and rattle off all the scripture you want. Man, I know people who have the scripture back and forth up here, but they are dead to the Holy Spirit and they have no power within them whatsoever. They'll probably beat me in a debate, but I'll tell you what, I'll lay my hands on them and they'll fall out in the Spirit. And they don't know what hit them because they're doubting and wavering. Where was I at? Rabbit trail. We're on seven. When you are half-hearted and wavering, it leaves you unstable. Can you really expect God to receive anything from the Lord? The believer, I like this translation. Let's just read on. We'll just finish it out. I'm pretty early. Wow. The believer who is poor still has reason to boast, for he has been placed on high. But those who are rich should boast in how God has brought them low and humbled them. For all their earthly glory will one day fade away, like a wildflower in the meadow. Here's kind of that hot and cold thing again, right? If you're lukewarm and wavering, ugh, I'm going to spew you out of, your, uh, out of my mouth. And this really doesn't, you know, this, could, this has two meanings in itself. The believer who is poor, now obviously that could be poor in spirit and very humble. And it also can mean, uh, mean the physical aspect of, of the monetary, the money as well. Has a reason to boast either way. No matter where you're at in your life, 
I don't care how long you've been walking with the Lord, the rain's going to fall. And the rain's going to shine. These are the tests of God. Tensions that we're dealing with in our mind, these things should these things should be overcome. These things should be understood that I am no longer that man. Flesh, I put you under because my spirit is reborn and is, and is rising above my flesh. So now that I know the difference of my temptations, or whether, or whether it's a trial from God, whether I'm going to pass or fail, that will lead you to the blessings or the curses. Amen? Verse 12, if your faith ain't strong, faith comes by the word, and the word, and the word, and the word. Even while surrounded by all of these life's difficulties, we will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. Well, just didn't I just say that? True happiness comes as you pass these tests with faith and receive the victorious of life promised to every lover of God. And then again, verse 13, say God's tempting you. He's incapable of tempting you because that is the sin tempting you and any part of the evil whatsoever. Evil's already in this world. Let's get used to it. It's here. The devil is still the God, little of this world, with all these little dominions flying around. And I'll tell you what, he's only got a third of the angels. Two thirds of the angels are still up in heaven battling for us. Amen? Not only that, millions of Holy Spirit people who are born again in this earth also have the power over the devil in this world. So you don't think he's un outnumbered? Think again. And all you got to do is blurt the name of Jesus out and if you're not wavering. Because the power of Jesus' name is so powerful to heal, to cast out, to remove any fear, any yoke, any burden. And each one of us have that holiness with inside of us if we have said that prayer of salvation and Jesus now resides there. So the devil does not have a place. He knows you better than you know yourself. I'm not giving him that. He knows this. He knows this better than we know. He's been here a lot longer. I'm not saying he's a dummy. But I'm saying God is a lot more powerful. And if I don't abide in this, and if I don't get my word straight in here, then he's going to tempt me. Then he's going to do all these things that are going to make this waver and doubt. Wait a second. Maybe, maybe, God, maybe God didn't want me healed. Maybe God doesn't want me to be blessed. Maybe, oh no. Bam, he's got gotcha. you in the snare. In the trap. Where are we at? We're almost done. That's all. In is all. 15. We'll start at 15. Evil desires give birth to evil actions. And when sin is fully mature, it can murder you. We all get that. So, my friends, don't be fooled by our own desires. Every gift God freely gives to us is good and perfect. Amen to that. Streaming down from the Father of lights, the King of kings, the Holy of holies, heaven above, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness. It is never subject to change. God was delighted to give us birth by the truth of, of his infallible word so that we would fulfill his chosen destiny for us and become the favorite ones out of all his creation. So, my dearest brothers and sisters, take this to heart. Be quick to listen, slow to speak. There's another three sermons right there. Be slow 
become angry. For this anger is never a legitimate tool to promote God's righteous purpose. Let's snap our lips, bite our tongues. We've been doing a lot of prayer on Monday nights about rebuking those who have backstabbed, who have naysayed, who have been ridiculing the body of Christ, those who have been wicked in their tongues and trying to say things against us as a body, as individuals, ourselves, even our families. We can pray against these wicked spirits that are influencing these men and women who are continually backstabbing the Christians. Or even if they don't even, they know not what they do. Because if they truly knew what they were doing, they would repent of it. Amen? Isn't that the case for all of us right now? I think we could probably all write down a, a list. Wow, I know not what I did there. Why did I do that there? That's why I wanted to get, have that little experience with each of us with Jesus earlier. Jesus, it's all about you, Jesus. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. I'm seeking your wisdom. I'm seeking. I'm seeking. I want to be more wise. I want to be more understanding. I want to know what I need to do to become better for you and your kingdom. It's not what I think someone else should do better so I can go and backstab them and talk behind their back and make sure everybody knows their weaknesses and all their sins to make myself look better or to make themselves look worse or just to think that I am holier than thou. It's not about that. It's about edifying and lifting everyone up. If you sense something coming out of your mouth that says it right there, be quick to listen. Rebuke it. Wait a second. Is what I'm about to say going to edify, going to lift up, going to produce fruit for that person? If I'm, am I saying this out of spite? Am I saying this to cause tension? Or, 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 or am I prejudiced in some way? Am I going to cause a circle of a whole bunch of gossip? Then let's just pray about it. Because I'll tell you what, the moment that you can rebuke the enemy and rebuke yourself in your mind, knowing that where this temptation is coming from, you can rebuke your tongue in saying things that are vitally, vitally hurtful. Even though you're not saying them to their face, our words that come out of our mouth are just as powerful as God's word when he stood up in heaven and said, let there be light. Because your spirit that is within you is the same spirit that God breathed life in you through his word. Now your words are too just as powerful to cut just like that two-edged sword. And we got to be careful with the words that are coming out of our mouth because they are hurtful. I think I remember posting something on Facebook just a, just a few months ago about if you don't have anything to say that is uplifting, then you better put that sword back. Or you better use it on yourself. Because if you start using these words to cut other people, the last thing you want is to reap the, reper the, the, the repercussions of that seed that you're planting. I think the body of Christ would be a lot better off if we start lifting other, every people up everybody up and if we hear one another speak and say things about one another and say is this going to be edifying I've stopped people and said okay wait a second think about what you're going to say to me right now is this something that you're just trying to barf on me because you're angry or does it need to uh, need to be attended to in prayer right now now it got quiet right can be quiet. Should be quiet. Quieter people. Unless the Holy Spirit just wants us to shout for joy. Amen? Okay, I think, I think we can just close there. huh? I can go on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory, glory, glory to you. Lord God, I just pray right now that if there is someone here that knows 
that knows they have done wrong and they have not yet repented. There might be someone here that truly is wavering in their walk with the Lord right now. Maybe truly doesn't understand. Back in the day, they might have said a small little prayer or they might have been drugged to church and, and they thought that that church told them that they were saved, but they never truly, truly committed their life to you, relationship with you. And if anyone is in here like that right now, I want you to raise your hand. Be bold about it. Be faith about it because this moment in time right now has been ordained by God. And God knows your heart and where it's at. And there's no mistake that you are here right now listening to the words coming out of my mouth. So if there's anyone here right now who wants to recommit themselves or dedicate themselves right now to make their Lord, Jesus their Lord and Savior, go ahead and raise your hand. Amen. I see your hands. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Father. So, Father God, right now we're just going to say a prayer right now as a family. And in each one of your hearts, for those two who have raised their hands, it's a simple, simple prayer. And it's meant throughout our heart. And if you would like to come up afterwards, if I can... Make sure I have one of, the, one of the women leaders to come up as well. If you have any questions, we'd like to maybe lay hands on you as well after the service. So, Father God, let's just say a prayer right now. All together, please. Father God, right now I commit myself. I know I have done wrong. I know I have made mistakes. And I know I am a sinner. But, but God, you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. And I believe in my heart right now that Jesus died for me. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life, wash away my sins. I'm from this moment forward, you will be the Lord of my life. I thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to praise you and worship you the rest of the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Praise you. Hallelujah.